here with Kate Richberg, author of Simple Soldering. And Kate, you have great ideas always. I can't wait to see what you're going to show us. Oh, thank you so much, Katie. I'm so excited to share this project today. So I've got you some wire rings. All right. And we are going to make some twisted wire, and we're going to flatten it. I'm going to show you how to use this wire twister, and then I'm going to go to the tool that sometimes strikes fear into the heart of people, this fabulous rolling mill. We're going to flatten that wire out. But it's really easy to use, right? It's so easy. I have one in my studio. I use it all the time. All right, let's see. All right, so let's start by making some twisted wire. I've used 16 gauge wire here, and this is about maybe two feet or so of the twisted wire. And so you can use any gauge that you like. Um, to do the twist, I would say don't go any thinner than about 18 gauge. 18, 16, 14, they all work great. Okay. And so I've added my wire here to just this little clamp from my bench pin to kind of stabilize it, and I've just folded it over in half so it's caught. Just so anything that you can stabilize it on, a hook, whatever you might have in your studio will okay. hold it. Then I'm going to go ahead and I've folded my wire over to add a little bit of bulk here at the end. And now I'm just going to insert it into the chuck of my wire twister and I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Once it's good and tight, and give it a really good tug, Katie, because, you know, when you're twisting, you don't want the end of this wire to come out. Make sure yeah. you've got a good connection You there. want it to be nice and tight and even. All right. Shall we, we twist? Go. Let's twist. So I pull on the wire to create tension and just slowly start to twist this wire. And stop when you think it looks good. And I'm going to stop right here. There we go. Looks good to me. Then Definitely. We're, yeah. Then we're gonna Gives it a great texture too. Yeah. And that's what I think is fun working with twisted wire rather than just plain wire. It's nice to have a little bit of texture. Right. So I've just opened up the chuck and I'm going to free it up from this clamp just by using a wire cutter, cut it away. And then I'll even up the end so it's ready to go through the rolling mill. Rolling mill. All right. So don't let the rolling mill scare you, you guys, because it is pretty um, easy to use. And all that it does is these rollers adjust with just this little um, handle up at the top. So you rotate it one way to open them and rotate it the other way to compress them So you down. can adjust the amount of compression. If you can get your twist very flat or you could just flatten it out a tiny bit. Exactly. And so I start by maybe making the flattening or the compression mm, maybe not too heavy, not too um you're not just too sort of thin. taking the roundness off yeah. the first time through? Because I want to see, I just want to give myself a, um, a little tester, right? So I'll put it through the rollers here, the end of my wire, and I'll tighten it down just enough so when I pull on this wire, it doesn't come out, okay? Then all I do is I start and I rotate the handle just like this, and then I'm going to back it up, back the wire back out just a little bit, and I'm going to check the compression. And if I don't like the compression, and this, I'm just looking at it now, it's not quite as flat as I'd like. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down my rollers just a little bit more, just a little. And we're going to send this through one more time. All right. All right. So Katie, why don't you grab that wire as it's coming out the other end. OK. And we're just going to keep going here. So get it all the way through, keep going, keep going. And so you could use this anytime you're looking for a little extra compression on the surface. Yeah, exactly. You can do the same thing with sheet metal. You know, you can texturize, you can do all that kind of stuff with it. But this is a good way to introduce yourself to using that rolling mill. So you can see how nicely um, flattened and patterned this wire is. And you can also kind of see here that the wire's a little bit stiff. So if you're using heavier gauge wires before you actually want to turn it into the ring, you may want to anneal it to soften it up okay. by just heating using it. Using your torch. Yeah, using your torch, exactly. Now I've created a ring and it's ready to go here um, out of flattened wire and the gauge I used was a little bit smaller. This is an 18 gauge ring that I did here. And we're just going to go ahead and um, you'd form it uh, using a forming plier or on your ring mandrel. Just get it to a nice ring shape, the size that you like it. Make sure those ends are flush and ready to solder and we'll solder it closed. All right. I'm using some paste solder here. This is copper paste solder, so you don't need to add any flux or anything like that. It's all ready to go. And I have a little bit here. It's about a two millimeter 
like round bit on the end of my... And you're wearing glasses, and I am too, but if that's people right. don't wear glasses, they want to wear their safety that's glasses. That's right, yeah, before we fire up that torch, always grab those safety glasses. I'm going to go ahead and just add my little paste solder right on the inside. Right. All right, shall we fire it up? Well, let's fire it up. Okay. So I'm going to pop on my torch. And you don't need a super big flame. You can see I'm going to dial that back just a little bit here because the ring isn't too big. And remember, Katie, when you're soldering, especially with paste solder, you want to come in and introduce that flame a little slowly so that your solder doesn't jump or move around. And you can see that solder is going to sizzle a little bit. It may smoke. We may see a little bit of flame. That's the binder kind of burning away from, um, from the paste. But as soon as that calms down, see that there? I've just come in, that's flowed, and now I'm gonna flip it around and really heat that and make sure that that solder joint is flowed all the way through. Great. We're gonna turn this off, and here comes my favorite part, the quenching. We're gonna grab it with our soldering tweezer. Quench it. And quench it. And then you would pickle patina polish? Pickle patina polish, Aww. and you have a wonderful ring. So pretty, let's take a look at the finished ones because they have a really nice, warm glow. Yeah. And what a great idea for twisted wire. Yeah, I think that the wire twisting, you know, like I said, it's a perfect introduction to the rolling mill.